Have you ever felt underpaid and undervalued at work? It's a universal feeling, one that's often accompanied by a gnawing sense of discomfort. It's the fear of negotiation, a common apprehension that holds many back from discussing their salary. This fear, though, is more of a phantom than a reality. It's born out of uncertainty, a lack of confidence or sometimes the worry of coming across as greedy. But what's crucial to remember is that your salary is a reflection of your worth. It's an acknowledgement of your skills, your experience and your contributions to the workplace. That's why it's so important not to shy away from salary negotiations. It's not about being confrontational or demanding, but about asserting your value. It's about standing up for what you deserve. So, let's debunk the myth, let's face the fear, and let's talk about salary negotiation. Remember, the first step to any successful negotiation is overcoming the fear of the conversation. So how do you know what you're worth? This question might seem daunting, but it's absolutely essential to answer when you're stepping into the realm of salary negotiation. The key lies in research. You need to understand your market value, which is influenced by factors like the industry you're in, your location, your level of experience, and your unique skill set. Imagine you're an artist. Your painting's value isn't just about the colors you choose or the strokes you make, it also depends on how much similar work is selling for in the market. Likewise, your professional worth isn't just about your job title. It's about the demand for your skills and your unique contributions. There are plenty of resources out there like salary comparison websites that can give you a ballpark figure. Remember, this isn't about selling yourself short or asking for the moon. It's about finding a fair price for your skills and expertise. Understanding your worth is crucial, it sets the foundation for your negotiation. Scene script. Armed with your market value, the next step is building your case. You've done your research and you know what you're worth. Now it's time to show your employer why they should invest more in you. Think of this as your personal sales pitch. You're selling your skills, your contributions, and most importantly, your value to the company. Start by highlighting your achievements. What have you accomplished during your tenure? Have you led successful projects? Have you exceeded targets or quotas? Maybe you've developed a new process that increased efficiency or reduced costs. These are your selling points. They're tangible proof of your value and your potential to contribute even more in the future. Next, consider your responsibilities. Are you managing a team? Are you handling critical tasks or projects? Have your duties expanded since you first started? This isn't about boasting or exaggerating, it's about painting a clear picture of what you do and the value you bring. Don't forget the improvements you've made in your role. Maybe you've streamlined a process or perhaps you've found a way to resolve recurring issues. These improvements not only show your initiative but also your commitment to the company's success. They're a testament to your ability to identify problems and implement effective solutions. Now how do you frame these points to demonstrate your value to the company? It's not enough to just list your achievements and responsibilities. You need to connect the dots, show how your actions have positively impacted the company. Did your project result in increased sales? Did your efficiency improvements save time and resources? Make the connection clear and compelling. Remember to be confident and assertive as you present your case. You're not just asking for a favor, you're providing reasons why you deserve a higher salary. It's about showing your employer that investing in you is a smart business decision. Remember, you're not just asking for more money, you're demonstrating why you deserve it. Now, it's time to negotiate. The actual negotiation process can feel like walking a tightrope. You're balancing between what you want and what your employer is willing to give. However, with the right approach, you can navigate this journey confidently. The key is to be professional, assertive, and prepared for compromise. Let's delve into how you can make all these elements work in your favor. Being professional doesn't mean being cold and distant. It's about treating the negotiation as a serious business conversation because, well, that's what it is. You're not asking for a favor, you're discussing your compensation for the skills and hard work you bring to the table. Always remember, you're not being greedy or unreasonable for wanting a fair wage. Assertiveness, on the other hand, is about standing your ground. You've done your homework, you know your worth, and you've built your case. Now, it's time to present your arguments with conviction. Assertiveness is not about being aggressive or confrontational, but about being firm and clear in your requests. Now, let's talk about compromise. You might not get exactly what you asked for, and that's okay. The important thing is to go into the negotiation with a plan B. This could be a lower salary you're willing to accept or other benefits like flexible hours, work from home options or additional vacation days. Remember, 
Negotiation is not a battle to be won, but a conversation to reach an agreement. It's crucial to keep an open mind and be ready to adapt your expectations. You might be surprised at the alternatives your employer might propose. Finally, don't forget to listen. Listening is just as important as speaking in a negotiation. It shows respect, helps you understand your employer's perspective, and can provide valuable insights into what they value. So when you walk into that negotiation room, walk in prepared. Be professional, be assertive and be ready to compromise. Have your plan B at the ready and remember to listen as much as you speak. Negotiation is a two-way street, be prepared to give and take. Negotiation doesn't end when you've agreed on a salary. Remember that phrase because it's a crucial part of any successful salary negotiation. Now you might be thinking, I've done the hard part, I've negotiated, we've agreed, so why isn't it over? The reason is simple. A verbal agreement is a great start, but it's not the finish line. You want to get that agreement in writing. It's a way to ensure that both parties are on the same page, and it gives you a tangible reference to what was agreed upon. Don't be shy about asking for this. It's standard practice, and it protects both you and your employer. But getting the agreement in writing is only half the story. The other half is about proving your worth continuously. You've convinced your employer that you're worth a certain salary. Now it's time to show them they made the right decision. It's not about working yourself to the bone, it's about doing your job well, going above and beyond when it's called for, and continuously learning and growing in your role. It's about being the employee that your salary says you are. And here's another thing. Just because you've successfully negotiated your salary once, doesn't mean you're done for good. Your career is a journey, not a destination. As you grow professionally, your value will increase. You'll gain new skills, take on more responsibilities, and become more experienced. And with that growth comes the potential for future negotiations. Don't be afraid to revisit the negotiation table when the time is right. It's not about being greedy. It's about being compensated fairly for your growth and contribution. And remember, you've done it once, you can do it again. So, to wrap it all up, post-negotiation is about ensuring the agreement is in writing, continuously proving your worth, and being open to future negotiations. It's about understanding that the negotiation process doesn't end when you shake hands and agree on a figure. Remember, salary negotiation is not a one-time event but a continuous process throughout your career. It's a journey and you're in the driver's seat, so buckle up and enjoy the ride.